Okay. Hi, my name is Dr. Michelle Meenenberg, and today we are here together with parents, and we're talking about transitions during you know this time, which could be challenging because of COVID. And there's some questions that we're going to review. You know, thinking about what it's been like since March, um, where we're presently at. And you know, a lot of us have the challenge of having summers home with our children. Um, otherwise, they'd be away. And looking, you know, to the future, into the fall and school, and you know, particularly here in New York, they've already announced that um, it's going to be. Um, and I know, Paul, you live in New Jersey, but they've already announced that it's going to be part-time school, and also on an ACR so also in, in, um, in Connecticut. Um, there's going to be part-time you know, remote learning and part-time, you know, at school learning. So, you know, I'm sure that parents also have some thoughts and feelings about that as well. So we'll start off with talking about what it's been like, you know, since March, um, you know, for all of you being home for your, with your kids. And also just, you know, while you're talking to mention how old your kids are, because of course, different ages are going to bring up different challenges. Um, and I think I'm the only one here who actually has a college age child, right? Yes, I am. So I am the oldest, <laughs> I guess. So I'll speak. I'll speak to that age and, and above. But you know, I think we could speak from uh, below that, right? Um, so just starting off, you know, what what the past, I guess, several months has been for all of you. You know, what particular challenges has come up, and how you've been kind of coping with it, and how your kids have been. Also, anybody want to start? I can start. Okay. Chime in. Yeah. And just don't forget to unmute yourself. Yes. Nicole, did you want to start? Oh, sure. I think there were two of us that said that, that we would start at the at the same time. Okay. So Rebecca will will do it after. Okay. Um, so I'm Nicole Ostrowski Fabish. Um, I've known uh, Michelle since we both got our Masters of Public Health degrees. Um, a bunch of years ago. Um, I have to say that the last few months, um, and I might be in the minority, uh, have been an opportunity for our family to regroup. I actually left my job of 22 and a half years um, very coincidentally, um, but I think everything happens for a reason, right before this, the pandemic started in March. Um, so I really did not have to work throughout this time. My husband is retired. Um, so we have been able to uh, be able to support our children. I have 15 and a half year old uh, twins, a boy and a girl, um, who uh, just finished the ninth grade. So they're old ninth graders. Um, they were uh, remote schooling Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, four hours a day. Um, my daughter Miranda really did whatever she needed to do and got through the four hours. Um, more so than not, one of those hours was either study hall or gym, which she was excused from. So it was really three hours. Um, the range of the involvement of the responsibilities of the classes, um, you know, some teachers were very engaged and gave a lot of work and then others didn't really care and they just got through whatever they had to, some curriculum, some not. Some teachers were very burnt out and it was very obvious. So as time progressed, um, that, that was very obvious. My son, on the other hand, um, has a, a variety of challenges and special needs, including some ADHD and some anxiety and a learning disorder. So for him, it was much more challenging. Um, for him, uh, by the time spring break came and our school district in New Jersey did uh, give the entire spring break, it was a good mental health break for everybody. Um, by spring break, he was done. And when uh, uh, we returned, quote unquote, after spring break, um, not much changed. He was very burnt out. He, um, there were issues with focus and attention. Um, he really didn't pay attention much during uh, the classes. He did what he had to, and that was sort of it. Um, and we found that he was doing whatever homework he had to do, homework, quote unquote, that he had to do was at midnight every night. Um, some teachers were more understanding than others. Um, some, uh, yeah, some teachers were more understanding than others. He has a very comprehensive 504 plan. Some teachers followed that 504 plan while others didn't. 
Um, I'm a rather involved and assertive parent. So I called out the teachers who didn't follow the 504. So I also had multiple conversations with the principal of the school throughout the time to just try to get him through it. Um, there was nobody more happy than me uh, on that last day of school. Um, and it's been a really nice break. Unfortunately, now they have summer work, which I don't think they've eased up on um, amidst my uh, prodding. So that is now my, my current battle. Um, as far as, you know, sort of where we're at right now, um, I do know what's going on with the reopening because I sit on the school district's uh, reopening commission. Um, so I've been able to, you know, share what I can with the kids. And I think having an understanding of sort of where we're at and where we might be going from a school perspective has been very useful for the family. Okay. So that's one perspective. Anybody else? Rebecca, you were going to kind of speak from... I could definitely give you some perspective on multiple levels. I have an eight and a nine year old, so they were in third and fourth grade. My um, daughter, um, if any of you know, um, lives on a planet with sparkles and rainbows. So <laughs> she was like distracted <laughs> working from home and she normally you know, gets pulled into um, smaller groups. And so having to, to self regulate, self discipline, it's just not where her, her uh, her retrieval of information happens. Um, my son um, has a, a severe anxiety and, and there was a lot going on with that too. And you know, the stress of everything. I'm a single mom too. So I can tell you that um, along with my other single mom friends, we are not in this alone because I literally, you have one person now that has to educate two kids and then also work. And my industry was completely shut down. So that's another perspective where I'm a photographer. And um, you know, we do uh, major events is, is the crux of, of our business. And so it's a difficult situation when that gets shut down because you're thinking positively and pivoting and all of that amazing stuff. And thank God I've been able to, but you can't do that and um, school two kids and um, cook 18 times a day. Um, and also, uh, like clean the house too. Like there is like eight jobs that I did not apply for <laughs> that I got. And, you know, unfortunately it could result in not having a place to live. You know, there's a real, there's real problems that you stress about on a daily basis, but you have to keep it calm. And there was like a, there was like a little while where the school I felt was really putting unfair expectations. And I, I, I found myself yelling at my, my daughter for not checking her emails. And I'm thinking this girl didn't even know what an email was a month ago. And I would stop and check myself. And I realized that it's just, nobody can understand. And there's so many different families in different situations that finally I felt like it was up to me to say, um, when the school was like this and she didn't hand in this. And I, I said, or, or what? Like, I just had a look and say, or what? Are we going to go to third grade jail? Like, this, <laughs> tell me what, the, you know what I mean? Because it was not fair for my children to just be, and I, at some point, psychologically had to like take my mommy hat off and said, you know, just so you know, guys, it is totally healthy for you to um, hate me right now. Like, I didn't want, they were feeling guilty because they're like, and I said, I, I said, I am sick of my own voice, just so you know. And also, I, you're living with a dictator and you have one sibling and you didn't want to spend that much time to begin with and you got school, but you know, it's, it's very difficult and the anxiety and not having an outlet and boys not talking to their friends on the phone as much as girls do. So they really are more insulated. There was all of that. That's a good of, point. That's a really good point. Um, and so, and I really did a lot have to, um, like a couple of times I had to then talk to the other moms and say, Hey, are you, are your boys suffering? Because I have to set up a, a zoom date with the kids because he needs to reach out to something, you know, and then there's divorced families, which has its own set of politics in there, which I will be discreet about. Cause I know this is going to be aired, but you know, everything together is, is really, um, it's not something that any educator could really understand. Um, and even to the point where I was speaking to, um, my daughter's, you know, the school psychologist and um, and she said, I'm going to keep it late. Ask about the summer. I said, but to one person, to my child who doesn't know what she's doing tomorrow for the summer or what, wh whose house she's going to go to that, that does pose a little bit of a stress. So, you know, even to like something as basic, a uh, one word can be a trigger to something, you know, that a child shouldn't be thinking about. Um, so I really just took it upon myself to just say, 
or what? That's what I told myself every day. Like, what's going to happen if you don't do what the teacher said or the or whatever it was? Like, nothing is going to happen. Nobody's inside my children's head better than I am, and nobody understands their pain and their limitations. So it's not up to me to try to live up to a, an expectation that's impossible to me. It really is impossible, which will only result in my children spiraling. My first and foremost priority was to make sure their mental health was okay. And that to me was above everything else. And I told the kids, listen, if you don't know what you need to know by December, we're going to have to go over school, but I'm not going to yell at you guys anymore because it's not helping anybody. And it's, I could watch them like, you know, getting stressed out. And so that, that was pretty much my experience. Hmm. I'm, Kirsten? I'm, Kirsten? Yes. I'm happy to chat. Uh -huh. So just want to say hi to everyone and to thank my darling, beautiful friend, Michelle, for hosting this group and giving us all an opportunity to speak and get support. Um, I have a back-to-back -back, uh, fifth grader and a sixth grader rising. Si oh, sorry. Sorry. We have no... What grade are my girls in? One was in fifth, one was in sixth. Oh my goodness. Okay. One is in public school, one is in private school. So they both had really different experiences. And our setup at home is that I don't work and my husband works. And fortunately he had a great setup at home. So he was there in a very supportive capacity in whichever way that we needed. Um, there are a lot of there are a lot of um, layers to this one opening question, and I, I know that you had asked how we coped, and I just want to say that from the outset, my motto once the first two weeks of like what the hell's going on kind of settled and we realized we were home, my motto for the family was we're taking one day at a time, regardless of anything. Like we're going to focus on the present and the here and the now, so that we can just manage what's going on because thinking about the future is way too anxiety provoking we can't control that what we can control is what we're doing now and i made sure that everybody had different tools to ground themselves and obviously that was different for myself different for my children um, my husband's grounded all the time doesn't <laughs> lucky for him doesn't need any anything extra but we all try to embrace what we needed every day to make sure that we could cope and we could deal um, I also told the children that we had to be really open about how we felt um, and some days we could hate our life and express that and let's work through that instead of ignoring it and also think about what we're grateful for and how blessed we are but not let that take away and dismiss all of the anxiety and the worries and the stress and the, the feelings of loss that that we were feeling because of so many you know different things that we all lost whether it was about mitzvah or family coming from australia or whatnot um, i have two different learners at home i have one child who's really self-motivated and self-sufficient um, and was kind of good on her own with checking into Zooms and checking her email and getting online. And they both have learning needs, very, very different learning needs. And I have one child who's not an independent learner at all. So that child required me to physically sit with her from the morning until the end of the school day, whatever I created for her. And I really wasn't able to attend to anything else at that time. I wasn't allowed to, I couldn't attend to myself, to my other child, to my dog, who's a third child. And really the focus was her and focus and attention is also an issue for her. I know that somebody else had mentioned that. So um, getting her to stay on task with the tremendous amount of work that she had to hand in and submit was really difficult because she, I had to hold her accountable for every single thing that she did. Um, and that was challenging for her. It wasn't her fault. She had lost all of the structure and all of the services that are afforded to her because of her learning needs from not being at school. So I felt like um, it was incumbent on me to supplement and comp compromise, uh, uh, compensate for as much as I possibly could. There are some there are some days where that was really at a cost at everybody else in the family, including myself emotionally. And it was real. Those days were really, really, really tough. Um, but we got through. And we survived by implementing all the different strategies that we have for keeping grounded whether it's talking it out or going for a walk or moving our body or taking a bath or meditating or writing our feelings down or whatever it may have been um so but i also like the first speaker i'm sorry i apologize i forgot your name we also oh. chose to look at this as an opportunity and i think the one there are a lot of silver linings that have come up for us as a family but the one thing for me as a mother that i really appreciate even though it was really challenging was that i got the clearest and deepest window into the kind of learners that my kids are i knew what they were before 
but until you physically sit with them and you see what their struggles are from first-hand experience, not from reading reports and hearing from teachers and going to parent-teacher, I'm talking about living, living it with them for every single day for three months to really see where else we need to up the ante on her services and to really empathise with her struggles. And I saw myself as a student, which is why we clashed a lot because she had, it was a mirror up to me. I was that kind of student. So I knew what she was going through and it was, it was tough for me to experience with her as a mother and to see what it must, what it must be like for her to be in the classroom. So just briefly, those are some of the things that, that, that came up for us as far as the schooling piece. Um, okay. So yeah. Daniel? Hey, it's Daniel. Um, first of all, uh, I, I don't do sessions like this, so I really super appreciate you setting it up, and I appreciate everyone else's um, uh, candor, I guess. Um, you know, at first I thought I was going to say I compared with one person, now it's compared with everybody. I mean, there are bits of what I heard from everybody that I think um, applied and occurred with us. Um, uh, again, I got three kids age 16 to 11. Um, two private school, one public, the school's experiences were very different, one from the other. Um, and even uh, for those who, the two kids, sorry, who were both in the private school, their experiences were different, one from the other, not only because they are different, but just the way that, that their grades and their, and their teachers, I think, were handling things. Um, <clears throat> I think the, the fact that the two, and, and my wife and I both live here, we both, you know, two parents in the home, we both were working. Um, so I think the fact that the younger two had the school made a huge difference on everything to the positive uh, because into the school's credit, they got that going very quickly. The kids very quickly had a sense of continuity, even though it was not the same at all. Um, they had a sense of, of, of connectedness, they had a sense of purpose, which was I think a big deal too. Um, and um, that I think that all really helped the rest of us kind of maintain some amount of structure. And then my wife and I had to work. So that, like, so there were a number of things that better or were structured, they were just some amount of structure, or sort of forced structure. I think that was pretty helpful. My eldest, um, different situation, his, uh, his school didn't do as great of a job. The nature of, of learning was um, sort of uh, less, if you will. Um, and, you know, he left to his own, he would have uh, stayed up till 4.30 every night and woken up at 2.30 every afternoon. And he did that whenever he could. And, and one of the things I think we tried to do, which people talked about was, kind of be a little bit um, uh, a little bit lax, a little bit allowing, right? I mean, this whole thing was just so upside down and weird for everybody um, that I think in some cases in the beginning, we tried to get everybody out for walks or doing some outside thing and it became a little bit annoying for all of us and just hard to fit in, frankly. It would have been, I think, wonderful if we did, but what we, I think, tried to do is just be more allowing. Uh, allowing, because, I mean, it would be the right word, but we were each stressed people we were all concerned about safety we were all annoyed and bummed and things were hard and limiting and canceled and all that kind of stuff uh social dynamics really you know in some cases changed some for the better and some got harder uh interestingly i think two of our kids found it was actually i think they'd say it was almost it was positive in a lot of ways um I, so i think a lot of these dynamics had you know had to do with where were we beforehand and what was going on in each of our lives and um you know, I think overall, uh, it's gone okay. In some cases, we've become closer. We've had some time to think and act a little bit more cohesively. I think the comments people said earlier about sort of, you know, talking things out more, um, trying to be transparent as much as we can, and, um, and then on sort of just family value stuff, really trying to take the opportunity a little bit to, uh, to talk through some more things that we just would otherwise let go. So uh, hard, to, hard to kind of wrap up several months of really weirdness in just a couple of minutes. Uh, I'm happy to talk a lot more, but um, mm -hmm. really kind of a mixed experience and in some cases good, right? But, but challenging for sure. Mm -hmm. Is that helpful? Yes. Okay. <laughs> and I, th I think it's good to get a basis of kind of where people are at. So when we talk about like what's going on presently, you know, and kind of the future, we have a basis of understanding of like, you know, everybody's kind of family dynamics and where they're at within their family, which is, I think, gives it a little bit of a context, right? Anissa, you were going to say something? Yes, yeah, so we are the last one. Um, oh, Rocio, also. <laughs> so, um, first of all, thank you, Michelle, because it's a great opportunity, especially for me to kind of talk it out, the stress. Um, we have a five-year-old. He actually turned five just June 1st. Mm. Um, 
we kind of lived with COVID a little bit longer than the, I think the rest of the Americans because um, our families are in Italy and um, both my parents are in Milan and my husband's uh, family is in Venice. So there were the two epicenter. So for us, we were living with the fear way before it arrived here. Yeah. Um, and in fact, when the first case, um, uh, we live in Greenwich, Connecticut, when the first case came to Westchester, uh, I immediately call um, our son's pulmonologist because he has asthma and talk to him. And he um, suggested that we keep him home on total lockdown because if he would get COVID, um, it would be very serious for him. Mm -hmm. um, so being, you know, uh, having only him and Michelle, you kind of understood what kind of mom I am. Yes. <laughs> um, I panicked. Um, I panicked of everything, every single uh, object or fruit or vegetables, no matter what, what, whatever was arriving to this house, I was in full gear, head to toe, gloves, Lysol, disinfected everything. Um, we bought extra food and an extra freezer. We froze everything. We, you know, I put myself and my son in full lockdown since March 6. Mm -hmm. And to this day, did not see anyone, did not let anyone step inside the house or close to my son. Even my husband, the few times that he had to go to work, he had to strip outside. I would disinfect him. He would go and have a shower. So <laughs> thank God we live in the middle of the forest and no one sees him um, because otherwise the police will be here already. But um, so it was, it's been quite challenging. Um, I also was in the middle of starting a new business, uh, which um, of course in a sector that is hurting a lot. Uh, fashion. Um, so for me, uh, it kind of was on standby because I couldn't wear too many hats between the mother, the cleaner, the, the, the wife, the, everything was a little bit too much. Um, one thing that I think it was the most important thing of all this pandemic, it's kind of, it made us stop and think about what is really important. Um, prior to um, uh, COVID, you know, I was very stressed because I couldn't do much. Um, we don't have any help or any one uh, close by family wise. So our son was in daycare, uh, but still I was the primary one. And so it was for me very stressful as a career woman to kind of juggle the two. Um, but now post COVID, I kind of realized that I can't get, you know, um, away from my son. He's like the most important thing. So I don't care about anything else. Um, we've been taking life day by day because we are still afraid. Um, so living in the fear is kind of a bit twilight zone, especially to explain it to a five-year-old why he can no longer go and hug his friends or see his friends. Um, you know, we, we were kind of, I was kind of jealous of all the parents that had older kids because they had all this facilities, you know, the Zoom, the, 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 the classes, something. Um, I have to admit that the daycare that he was in, they tried, but I, the teachers that he had already were not the greatest. So um, the Zoom were a failure for him. Um, it, the, it was more stressful than anything. Um, so we tried to do little things at home, but again, I'm not, no teacher. So it, it, it's tricky, you know, he wants to play or watch TV. So I, I also even felt a little bit um, like a bad mother because I'm like, oh my God, I'm trying to work. He stays all day in front of a TV, which before he wasn't. But at one point I kind of gave up, you know, um, we both did because he was complaining, oh, he cannot stay all day in front of the TV. You have to make him do stuff. And I'm like, yes, but you know, <laughs> what? Um, uh, so it's, but at, we are at a point in which we give up and uh, we try to do activities with him. We try to do things, but at the same time, we're taking it day by day. And hopefully um, we'll see what happens for the new year uh, in September. Here in Connecticut, 
we received a survey from um, the school district asking us how we feel if the situation stays the same. We're still very scared. Um, we don't know what to do uh, because I think it's easier when a kid is older and it understands than when they're in such a young age. Um, our son understands why he can, could not have a birthday party, why he could not go and have a play date. He keeps on saying, oh, when coronavirus is over, when coronavirus is over. But the problem is at the same time, you know, having them in an environment um, where what scares us the most are those that are, they are symptomatic and where he is at such a great risk um, that if he gets it, God knows, we just feel too uncomfortable right now. So we are just taking it day by day and making decisions as it goes, but not making any plans for sure. Not traveling. Yeah. Not going home at all, you know, staying here for hmm. safe. Yeah. And Rocio, did you wanna? Sure. Well, hi, Michelle. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, sure. um, for me, it was like, uh, I hear her and it's sad. And I was kind of her at the beginning. Since I got, we got exposed to one of the first cases as well. And me not knowing for like a, a couple of weeks until I figured it out how close we were. Things got nothing happened, but I got kind of traumatized <laughs> and I feel like I traumatized my kids too, a little bit. Now I feel like, uh, and everybody feel more loose and relaxed, but we, we are very precautious. I have a twin, and girl and boy as well they're four years old um and uh eight years old nine years old Dora. she um the older one that was is perfect like she was so easy going she got everything at school have a bunch of hours from the plat like the website that they were using the platform like she that she was great like i couldn't we have no problem and i i was talking to her like she actually has more social life now mm -hmm. than before which was like funny and i say why yeah because now i can hang out with my friends any time on i i go to a house party and we're all over there like we talk more we we play games we laugh all together and like she's having a blast like I couldn't be more lucky to have the group of friends like she had, like super fun, super relaxing. So she's she's okay. She can't wait to see everybody else, like especially now that she's gonna go fifth grader and the whole graduation, the special trip they had at school. Like there's a lot of expectation for the new year. Now the youngest kids, I have three kids in three different schools. So it was a very big challenge. The twin girl, she was okay. She was a normal school, but the little boy it had a special education, OT and speech. So it was a little challenge. Like I was really happy before everything. Like finally we were like managed him and made him go to like a better speech better OT, better fo focusing better at school, like he was uh, bowing beyond of, of expectation until everything happened and I believe he have a little regret, like mm -hmm. couldn't be even better if we could, could follow him. He have uh, Zoom meetings and stuff like that with one on one teacher, which was easier. It wasn't the same case with the girl because she got like Soon meeting with a bunch of kids. Uh, it was a disaster. Like four, four years, four years old and five years old all together is like a, a joke. <laughs> but with him was a uh, kind of okay. But I don't know. We were like hoping, to, especially for him, to have more help. And that lack of help with him is something like. It bothered us. I mean, it's not bothering, but it's like worrying me. 
actually mm -hmm. for next year like he's gonna go regular school kindergarten and all all that stuff let's see what happens but in general we're okay we are surviving and i can't wait <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to segue into kind of where we're at and also just the future, like, you know, kind of, so I know for myself, right, I have four kids and I'm actually pretty fortunate because, um, I'm considered an essential worker. So I've been in my office every day. Um, I don't see, you know, patients in my office, but I do it remotely at my office. So it's actually my husband who's a stay at home dad right now. <laughs> and, um, you know, so it's a little role reversal, but he calls me frantic <laughs> all the time. <laughs> you know, they keep on bothering him while he's on conference calls and yeah, the poor guy. So I'm actually pretty delighted to leave the house. <laughs> I'm going to admit it. Um, and when I come home, of course, I'm flooded with kind of, you know, all the communication of what's happened during the day. But it, it's interesting because I have kids at all different ages, you know, age levels. You know, I have a college age child and then one in, uh, you know, 11th grade. Well, he, he graduated 11th grade and then another one in ninth grade and then one in uh, sixth grade. So it's really, really different stages. But I, I think I think for my kids, it has to do with their learning needs. And I find like my daughter has the most challenge. So it was really, really anxiety provoking for her. And I definitely saw that, you know, I could definitely see the, you know, where her anxiety was managed pretty well before all of this. And, uh, you know, when we had the difficulty of the academics, it definitely, definitely excelled it and intensified it. So, you know, it's like almost we're going to have to regroup afterwards again, you know, which is, which is fine. I think what, you know, just to kind of turn it over to the future, I think the challenge that, that we're finding in our family is um, right now is the loosening up because I find that, you know, families practice very differently. And, um, you know, I have a hundred year old grandmother that's in a nursing rehab facility who I haven't seen since, since March. And, you know, she's always at the forefront of my mind. Like, I want to see her. I want to see her. I want this to be over already, you know? So like, it's very personal to me, you know, per, you know, cause I really want to see her. I miss her so much. And I, I think in addition to that, I, I really try to teach my kids the value of like the greater good and thinking of others and, you know, um, thinking about other, other people's well-being. And I feel like I have to model that behavior. Um, and again, there's a lot of controversy on that. So I feel like I'm constantly, constantly battling, especially with my older ones, you know, about social distancing. Um, even yesterday, you know, it was my son, my 17 year old's birthday and he had a couple of friends over, um, and like, we had to keep checking on him in the backyard, you know, <laughs> um, and it becomes really difficult because they just lose sight of, you know, it's not normal to them. So they just kind of lose sight of it and it gets really anxiety provoking. Um, and as much as you explain it to them, it becomes really difficult. And I also find that Again, there are so many families that are social distancing differently that I find sometimes like I could become judgmental or I could be, um, I question like, is it, is it like a matter of value system or is it a matter of, you know, I guess, um, comfort with, you know, with health and, and other things, you know, and anxiety levels. And so there's just, it, it gets confusing, I guess, <laughs> a lot of confusion. And my and I, I'm definitely accused for my kids as being too hyper vigilant. That's for sure. They're like, you're crazy. <laughs> um, so that that's been struggle for me. And I don't know if anybody else, you know, are having that struggle. And I, you know, thinking about the fall, um, I don't know what's going to happen with my college age child because I don't know what's going to happen in his college. Number one, and then for the other kids. You know, I'm expecting it's going to be sort of like it is now. Um, and I feel bad for my daughter because I think it's going to be tough for her. I really do. And I feel really sad that my kids are home this summer. Like it, it hurts me inside my heart, <laughs> I have to tell you. And I think, you know, when you mentioned before about sitting in front of a screen and feeling kind of guilty about it, gosh, like I don't know any parent that's not struggling with that now, honestly, you know, and also with sleep routines. Like my kids are up like 
even my little one, egregious hours, <laughs> you know, and, and I'm sitting there and it's like 12, one, <laughs> I'm like, she's 11 years, she's 12 years old. Like, I don't know if this is okay. So anyway, those are the things that we're struggling with. I don't know if anybody else wants to chime in about kind of what's going on for the summer and then the future. I, I actually want to go, if you don't mind, Michelle, because I'm going to have to jump on a client call at five. Sure. So I, but I wanted to make a specific point about the future, which is why, um, yeah. is that I, this summer I have, I have young kids, eight, nine. So they're obviously it's difficult because I've had to be, um, like camp director. Cause even though I, mm -hmm. um, at my college age babysitter who was, um, every summer ended up sort of, we had a deal with her parents. She, we both, we all quarantined, we got tested. And then I was able to have her finally help me so I could, you know, make sure that my bills were paid. And, um, and this summer, even like, you know, you have to oversee everything and, and make, make the best. I, I did grapple with three hour camp, not three hour camp. I decided that I didn't do it. And, it, you know, it's expensive for, but I, I was watching the mental health and I said, um, and I ended up finding, um, so far alternatives. I'm going to take it day by day. Um, but what really concerned me about next year is besides the learning issues, yes, um, you know, I had this situation when, when uh, my son was in kindergarten with air fresheners and like cleansers and getting dizzy. And, you know, and I started to do a little research because I couldn't figure out what, what was happening until I went to the classroom myself. And he just has a really strong sensitivity. And, and you know, I was hearing from, um, you know, the with the, with a the five-year-old with asthma. And I said, I have asthma as well and, and autoimmune disease and um, thyroid disease too. And so I'm, you know, conscious of it, very conscious because I've had issues over Corona just from like the stress breaking down immunity. Um, and, uh, you know, stress literally causes, sorry, um, causes disease. And so the goal is to have the immunity really strong. And, you know, there's a direct link to, to bleach and, and asthma. And I was looking and I said, aside from everything else, like, I, I think it's just like, oh, those are like the real health freaks, you know what I mean? And I think people get put in that category, but I literally just Googled like cleansers, like, and, and asthma and, and, or autoimmune, and it's all in there. And there's tons of articles that are scientifically proven. And I said, well, how, if that's out there, why, why is nobody addressing the fact that they're probably going to have be like fumigating these, these rooms at the end of every day thinking COVID, COVID, but like asthma, something from, um, things like that, where it takes a few years to develop, you know? And, um, and I, my gut is telling me, I don't know if I want to put my kid in a position where I know that he's sensitive to chemicals and there's going to be a, a fumigation in them. So he could maybe avoid COVID and getting a little social interaction, but he could have a, a, a like a lung disease or autoimmune disease that runs rampant in our family for the rest of his life that he will not be cured for. So here I am trying to save him. But so there is that element that I think people aren't really looking at, which is why I wanted to make sure to bring it up before I had to go, because there are people who, who by way of whatever, didn't get to do the research because they didn't have a kid who was having it in, in kindergarten. And I wouldn't have known, and I could have given my kid an autoimmune disease if I didn't really look at every aspect of it. And I just feel like more parents should know what the results are and what's going to happen. And if they have stuff in the family that could trigger something that it's something to look at. So I, I know personally, I feel if it's going to be half and half, I'm definitely going to keep my kids home. I don't really trust, um, you know, everything that I can't control in keeping them safe. And I always tell my kids and I said it in like probably every day of Corona, I said, I have one job just to keep you alive <laughs> as long as possible. One job you have to eat and you have to, yes, you do. Yes, you do have to shower <laughs> and drink water because you will be dehydrated, you know? And I said, it's my job to keep them alive and the safest possible. So if I feel like their mental health is going to go crazy and I have to do, you know, a couple of even though it makes me nervous and be as careful as possible, I will. But if I feel like they're going to have a long-term illness that they can't be cured for, that I've been suffering from, that I wouldn't wish on anybody, it doesn't, you have to look at the overall picture and the balance, I think, with everybody. So mm -hmm. thank you for letting me say that. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Um, Michelle, I wanted to pick on what something that you said about differences in terms of families and social distancing. Um, that actually two days ago was the first time that we invited someone in the garden um, 
Lisa, that you know, and another uh, friend of ours. And I had, well, suffered of nightmares for this lunch, especially for my son. In fact, it, it, I was behind him, like you, um, you said. Um, I feel that a lot of people are, there are certain people that are taking this virus very lightly. Um, I do realize that I, maybe I am more concerned um, than others are, um, but I think that it's, it's a matter of respect um, that it's lacking. Um, because for example, here I'm noticing in Connecticut, not everyone is wearing a mask, not everyone wears gloves, not everyone, especially the younger generation, they kind of don't care, they travel, they don't really pay much attention. Um, but is a responsibility more towards others. You know, like for example, one of your kids could bring COVID and then you go and see your grandmother and you bring it to your grandmother. Absolutely. And that's the pro that what is lacking. And I feel that overall, even in the school system, um, we were uh, battling whether to send our son to camp uh, because he's suffering so much from not seeing his friends and not having this routine. Forget the going to sleep, it's, it's not even happening. The schedule here doesn't exist anymore. Um, but for sure, he's missing that one-on-one -on -one that he had with his friends. The problem is that I feel since it's so uncertain, um, this virus, and since so many people are taking it lightly in so many ways, um, and let's face it, when kids are small, whether it's pre-K, daycare, you name it, are this epicenter of bacteria and viruses, like you send your kids to one of these places and you're sure that it's gonna get sick of something or bringing home something. Mm -hmm. I feel that there are not, people are not so, aware and ready um, to take the responsibility of getting a child sick. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's why we felt, you know, even though I felt like a bad mother because I wasn't helping him, I wasn't making him happy on that sense. Mm -hmm. um, I, I too had to say, I have to protect my son. Um, and he, his life, it's the most important. And who cares if I have to stay home? Who cares if I have to like yell at him all day and arrive at eight o'clock that I'm crashed on in the bed, but I wanna make sure that he's safe. And other people, I don't think that everyone is taking it as um, serious and so respectful. So it's very tricky to uh, accept invites from like friends and stuff because not everyone really takes it seriously because I don't think if it doesn't, if you don't have the problem, if you don't have a child with, with some um, concern, if you don't have grandparents or someone that could get really sick from this, you don't really think about it so much as other families do. Yeah. So, so we have about 10 minutes until um, we have to end. So, you know, just want to hear if anybody else has any Thing that yes Christy oh so I was just gonna say that as far as the summer's concerned I have to admit and say that it actually hasn't been as bad as I thought I was very anxious uh, just for myself really needing a break and really first and foremost I wanted my kids to go to camp for them because I think they really needed it but I knew that I also needed it and I was worried I was worried for how I was gonna feel was I gonna be resentful was I gonna be um, just desperate for space and on some days I am but the overall picture is and I actually even checked in with my older daughter yesterday and I said tell me honestly like how has it been for you not to be at camp has it been harder than you thought better than you thought she goes honestly really not that bad at all and it's not the answer I would have expected from her which doesn't mean that some days aren't difficult for her but she said I actually am really liking us all being at home together um my my daughters who um, are very different and can often have a lot of conflict have almost developed a lot of tolerance with each other their their distress tolerance for each other has really increased because they've been at home together for so for so much so whereas I would have thought they would desperately need more space I think it's really improved their relationship they've all acknowledged that me and my husband have acknowledged that so mm -hmm. that's been great but I think the hardest thing for us about this situation in the summer is that we don't get to see our family in Australia 
and that's a that's a huge challenge for us i like you have a very um old grandmother who's 1999 this december and you know i find myself trying to sit with um the reality that i likely won't see her again and that's really tough um and not knowing when i'm going to see any of my family again really is the part that keeps me up at night and god forbid something should happen to somebody so but you know as a family unit i think we're doing much better than we would have thought and um still taking it day by day but i think on the whole you know everyone's doing well and the kids are staying engaged with different activities online and one of my daughters is staying engaged with her camp and they're doing really amazing things which is which is great and she looks forward to them and she gets to hang out with her bunk so it's, it's been really nice mm, thank you any last minute Daniel, we can't hear you. I think you're talking. Yes. Sorry about that. Okay, there you How go. How about that better now? Yes. Yeah, I had some issues. I, I apologize. Uh, again, I super appreciate hearing everyone else's experiences. And uh, it's nice to hear the nice, but on, on the, you know, several different elements that people spoke about, um, whether it's family or camp or, or schedules or whatever. I mean, one of the things that I feel like keeps coming up in our house, or at least how I'm thinking about it and talking with our kids is, you know, what you can control, what you can't control. Um, and, um, and also I feel like we're, at least I'm trying to engage more in, in, in a lot of time the answers I don't know. Right. And I think with younger kids, we too often maybe try to avoid the, I don't know, because now you're leaving your kid with stress, but trying to talk through the, I don't know, I don't know. And here's why. I mean, I think of the, and not to make it complicated, but just try to engage them in that a little bit. And there's been times when we're dealing with things like social distancing or whatever, what are we going to do? I don't know. What do you, what do y'all think? You know, and, and we don't, you know, my wife and I don't always think about things the same way our kids don't always think about it, but, but having the opportunity, I think we're making the opportunity to talk through, I think without adding anxiety to the, look, you know, this is hard. This is confusing. It's not clear. Uh, everyone is doing it differently. No one knows for sure. Um, you know, but trying to, again, not make that an anxiety thing as much as more, frankly, giving more control in a sense by embracing the, I don't know. Right. Um, and, and sort of engaging in, how do you think about these things? That's something I think we're, I'm trying to do is, is uh, on that front. Um, so again, just a, a little bit of, of a thing that we're doing and experiencing in the futures. I don't know. You know I guess that's the answer to that. What do we think about the futures? I don't know. It's so uncertain. Right. It is. That's what's so hard about it. <laughs> yeah, and even when school does come back, like, you know, am I, I, I going to feel comfortable with what the school's plan is, yeah. you know, or what? And, and so, uh, I don't know what to see. Mm -hmm. I just want to say, you know, it's interesting. My kids, one of them wanted to be at school and one of them didn't want to be at school. And one of my children says that regardless, she wants to be on campus. And the other one says regardless, she doesn't want to be on campus. And the one who goes to public school where she knows is that 1300 people at any one given time doesn't want to be there regardless. Um, so we're going to have to kind of deal with, you know, if school's open and her anxiety so high, she doesn't want to be there. How are we going to support that? Are we going to bring in a homeschooling, professional homeschooling for her and say like, that's her, what her year's going to look like or, you know, look at other opportunities so that she's not struggling with being on campus and having to deal with the anxiety of not feeling safe just because they've opened schools up. Mm -hmm. so yeah so before we we have to end actually <laughs> any last minute thing I really really you know so appreciate all of you speaking and you know really speaking from the heart um, you know really first of all just talking about how you're coping with your families and you know everybody's experience is so different and so rich Right. Um, and no, nobody knows what goes on behind closed doors, of course. Right. We all have our own personal stories. So I appreciate you sharing with them, you know, sharing them with us for all of us getting a sense of, you know, being able to relate to everyone's stories. And I know just sitting here, I, I think I, you know, I was able to relate to every single one of you in some way. Right. Um, so in a lot of ways, we are united, you know, by this, by the uncertainty. Right. So wishing you all a wonderful weekend and um, I will let you know when this is posted. Okay. And I hope of course that your families are safe and healthy and they stay that way. Okay. Thank you, Michelle. Okay. For your work, sweetheart. Thank you. Yeah.
Thanks, Thanks Michelle. Thanks, everyone. Okay. And nice meeting everyone. Thanks. Bye. Good luck. Stay Thanks, everybody. Bye.